turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but, the, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth, doeth not so, doth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more are the hearts of children of men? A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but a sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but that he that is slow to anger appeases strife. The way of the slothful man is a hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors there are safety. A man that hath joy... By the answer of his, a man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it? The way of life is above the, to the wise, but he, I'm sorry, the way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from, the, from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. He will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and the good report maketh bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is instruction and wisdom, and before honor is humility. Let's pray. We'll have a song. We'll come back and preach to you the whole chapter. Amen. It's going to be good. Uh, Kara did let me know that, well, it's funny. It's, she's just kidding. But she said, if you don't finish it, it's okay. You can just stop. <laughs> you didn't say that? <laughs> I'm only kidding. All right, let's pray. Let's ask God to help us. I, honestly, the Lord talk, spoke to me in this passage of Scripture, and I just want to give you a few things out of it. And so I may not get through the whole thing, but I want the Lord's way. So, Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for the word of God tonight. Please help us, God. Please uh, speak to us, Lord, the we often say the most powerful thing in the place is the word. And uh, God, I want to uh, rely upon that tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, give us what we need. Uh, we don't have a, a sermon per se prepared, but we've got 33 of them written in front of us. And I pray, Lord, you'd help us to be wise with our lives and 
and lives that, that want to chase the Lord and not live foolish. And uh, Lord, we would have a, a, a plenteous life because of that. Thank you for these scriptures. Thank you for the word of God that, that leads us to a life full of freedom and happiness and, and Lord, of peace and that passes all understanding. Lord, thank you for it. Lord, please bless the preaching and teaching of your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You be seated. Thank you. We were alone in the fields with our sheep, a star. Glowing bright, glowing bright in the east, with an angelic choir singing, All glory be to God in the highest, bade us come see. They said the way in a manger. Is a babe fast asleep? He is never a stranger to wise men who seek. He's the light and the hope for all of mankind. He's the way in a manger, and he's easy to find. Joseph were there when we came, and all that the angels had said was the same. And when I saw the baby, I knew just what to do. I bowed down to worship the light and the truth. They said the way in a manger is a babe fast asleep. He is never a stranger to wise men who seek. He's the light and the hope for all of mankind. He's the way in a manger and he's easy to find. The light and the hope for all of mankind. He's the way in a manger, and he's easy to find. It's a good message. I've never, I've never heard that song. Well, my wife was telling me about what she was teaching the kids today, and shepherds went looking for a savior. And the wise men, they went looking to give gifts to the savior. And so you either go looking for them to get the savior, and once you get them, you look to take them gifts. Amen. Yeah. And uh, that's a blessing. Proverbs chapter number 15, uh, you know, I, I, I was reading this and studying it, and uh, I really, my heart was trying to figure out a way to, you know, just to make something of it. If, if, if I say it like a preacher, just, you know, you want to have some kind of uh, a flow, and you want to have, uh, you know, and I, the first four verses were, were wonderful They're about the mouth. And that's something we, we all need help with because God's having me preach this tonight. But then as I read through it, and I, I just kept trying to, and I had points and different things, and God says, stop trying to make out of my passage what you want it to be. Just, I want you just to preach. I want you to pray. And I want you to write some things down and some things that I did do and, and looked over this. And, and so Solomon was the wisest man to ever live, the Bible said. And he wrote uh, the book of Proverbs. And, and he gave us a lot to look at. I took a class in Bible college. Brother Judson Mitchell preached Proverbs. He taught Proverbs in Bible college. I still have all my notes from Bible college on that. And it was one of the greatest classes I'd ever taken. 
and he just would go chapter by chapter through the book of Proverbs. And, and Brother Mitchell is very famous for that. Brother Charlie Clark took his class when he was in Hiles Anderson, a young man. And a lot of uh, people his age that went to Hiles Anderson at that time would say they took Proverbs with Judson Mitchell. And, and it was just, and Brother Mitchell is one of the wisest men I knew in Bible college. Very, very uh, wise person. Kara was his secretary in Bible college. And I learned a lot from Brother Mitchell. He would bring me in his office and he would teach teach me things on separation, teach me things on the Bible, and, and just little, kind of almost just, just took me to side and discipled me with stuff and showed me stuff, and, 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 uh, and, and separation was one of the big ones that I learned from him and how we were to be separated, and at that point in time where we were going to Bible college, it was starting to become less separated there, uh, and Brother Mitchell and others would notice that, and it took wisdom to see that. Uh, and it takes wisdom that for us to make it in life. It takes wisdom for us to uh, get through this thing. And, and I've been talking a lot about letting the Spirit live through you and let it make the decisions in your life. And that's what Proverbs would be. Uh, if you let God lead you, and you, uh, Brother Mitchell would often say, wisdom is seeing the world like God sees the world. Seeing things like God sees things. That is wisdom. And, 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 and the Bible says the foolish forsake wisdom. They don't want it. And, and, and if we're not careful, we get put into that category, although we're not to be fools. We're not to be empty and, and people who have no uh, leading in our life and don't care about God. But at times we act like fools. But if we have wisdom and if we have the Bible, we won't act like that. And so really, I just want to go through these with you tonight. And, and I have something written for every verse here. Uh, and just want the Lord to lead it. And, you know, really, as a preacher, you, you spend a lot of time studying. And, and you want God to use you. And, and you, want to, you don't want to get up here and feel uncomfortable because you don't really, you don't know where to go and different things like that. And some of you don't know this because most of you don't know because you don't preach. But I know that God told me that this was enough for tonight. That I had the book and I had him. And if I would pray, the Spirit of God would take over today, tonight, and he would help us. So I want to look at it and see some wisdom in here. Just grab my attention to my Bible reading. And really, uh, I don't want to uh, uh, labor long in the Word tonight with you, but I do want you to see wherever God wants us to go and how He wants us to get there. The first four verses talk about this thing here, the mouth. Now, what was interesting is when I knew that the deaf people, I thought they were coming back tonight, I thought, well, surely it means the same thing. They just can't talk, although that lady talks very well. I mean, very, very well. You would think that she could hear. She can't hear anything. But she can talk just like us. It's amazing. But I thought, man, this is going to be hard to preach this message about talking, and they can't talk. But, but I'm sure they do things with their hands that would, would be hateful and, and different things. And uh, the, the neat thing that they have is they can just shut their eyes and not have to look at it anymore when, when someone says something nasty to them. Uh, you know, we do this kind of stuff or... Or I do. I <laughs> cover my ears. <laughs> and, uh, and try not to listen when I don't want to listen. Amen. Uh, verse number one, very, very, very good verse. Something that we ought to apply to our life. And it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. A controlled tongue calms people. Uh, a soft answer is not a compromised answer. It is not giving the other person their way. A soft answer, when we look at that word answer, and we look at the word soft, and we look at it studied out a little bit, literally it means the answer can be good or bad. It can be hurtful sometimes, or it can be pleasant sometimes, but if it's said the right way, it will turn away wrath. And, and we often struggle with that. Our eyes struggle with that. And I know many of us do in here. And we, we play these games where well, it was the truth. Well, we just should have said it a little bit different. We should, have, we should have said it a little bit because it will turn away wrath if we have a soft answer. 
Uh, and, and we will build people or we will break people. We will help people or we will hurt people. Uh, and, and we have to be careful with that. And so we have to make sure, and I'm really wanting this message to preach to me tonight. Really, I just, I'm just honest about that, and, and I want to have a soft answer because I don't want wrath in my home. I don't want wrath in my life. But it says the opposite of that. Grievous words stir up anger. And many of us have been guilty of angering people. You say, well, you know, it's not my fault they got angry. What well, is? It says grievous words stir up anger. And so there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the, the end thereof is death. And, and so we, we talk about that. Well, I just think it ought to be said. Well, I do too sometimes. But as I examine this passage of Scripture in my Bible reading yesterday, because I was 15, the 15th, and I thought, you know, I was going to preach on Psalm 26 all week. And I just thought, no, this is, this is where I need to be. And, 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 I, and I often think, this is right up my alley. Not that I have it under control. I wish I did. But it's really something that I have to preach because I, I just want to be real. And I want, I want you to understand I have the same problems as everybody else. And I may have more than most of you. Personal problems. Not taking the pastorate and living for people and helping people in their lives. That's about personally. But I know that a soft answer turneth away wrath. And that's what God says, but grievous words stir up anger. So we have the ability to make people angry, or we have the ability to help people, not hurt them, to build them and not break them. And so God says it, the wisest man ever, a soft answer will turn away wrath, and we need that. Our mouths are so important. I thank God that I can talk and hear. I, I, I don't understand how anybody makes it in life with sign language. And this lady was telling us, you know, that, that she wasn't even taught it. She had to learn it herself. And, and, you know, but sometimes I think, well, maybe it might be better to be like that. Because when we get people hurting us with their mouths, or when we hurt people with our mouths, we don't help any of the situations. And, and so a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. Verse 2, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. Successfully. They do it the right way. The tongue of the wise. Wise people are not just old people who have lived their whole life and they 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 they, they speak softly and 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 they have you know they, they have this wisdom about them. No, no, we have the ability to be wise. We have the ability to be like God would want us to be. But it deals with our spirit and what what, what the Bible teaches, whatever is in the heart comes out of the mouth. So we can say, I can't believe I said that. But that's not true. That was in our heart and that came out. It, it, it's who we are. And, and he says, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. What they learn, what they, what they get from God, what they get from wise people, what they get from the Spirit of the Lord, what they get from the Bible, they use it aright. Successfully. It, 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 the, the, it, it, it's an adjective, all right, but it could be kind of a verb, which would make it an adverb. No? Yeah. And so, just checking with her. I thought it was pretty cool that I thought about that. But it, so the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. You see, it's contrast of wise and fools in this passage. Wicked and people that are saved. But the mouth of of fools. Fools are stupid and silly people. That's just exactly what a fool is. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. All fools aren't godless. Many Christians act stupid and silly. But it says the mouth of a fool poureth out foolishness. Like a big pitcher of water, the mouth of a fool just dumps it. I don't want to be a fool anymore. 
I want to use knowledge aright. I want to say the right things. I want the soft answer to turn away wrath. I don't understand everything. I've tried soft answers at times that didn't turn away the wrath. But he says it will. And, and maybe it did and I just kept on. Instead of doing it the right way. But fools, their mouth pours out, it just pours out foolishness, stupid stuff, being sad, you know. And, and listen to me, I'm not saying we're all there at times, but it's possible. So this tongue thing, this thing of our mouths is, has a lot to do with what's inside of us and, and the heart that we have. Wise men speak a right they speak the right stuff. Fools don't. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Now, I don't think Solomon just switched subjects there, decided it's about evil and good. I think he's contrasting good speech and foolish speech and calling it evil. And that God is there. God is right there in the middle of your situation that you have that you normally don't have here. If we were these people, we'd have it made. If I was the person I was at Liberty Baptist Church, and, 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 I, and, 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 and I'm speaking for all of us, the, the right things come out of our mouth here most of the time, I would think. I mean, I know I'm the pastor, so people don't just come spill their, their nastiness with me, but there may, may be going on in here. But if it is, you ought to correct that because this is your church. You ought to say, uh-uh, not here. You need to get that right. It's not my place. Yes, it is your place. But the eyes of the Lord are in every place. And, and we can, you know, uh, when, I, when I used to, I remember years ago at Bible Baptist Church, we, we stood in this long hallway right before the service, the choir did. And the music would start playing, the choir would walk out in front of everybody and walk up onto the platform. And we'd all be back there, and the, the temperature would change when Brother Weedo came in. Now, they weren't doing nothing wicked or nasty back there. They're just cutting up. But as soon as he came in, everybody's like, hey, Brother Weedo. And I used to think, man, the, you know, God sees all this. And they weren't doing nothing bad there. Don't get me wrong. But it's the same with us. You know, we, we might think that we're getting away with, man, we're killing, we're hurting the Lord with our, with our mouths with our relationships. And we can pretend like it's not happening, but it's happening. And I wonder where your heart is tonight on those things. Well, you know, I'm right and they're wrong. Or it's my way or the highway. No, that's not right. That, those, are, those are things lost people say. That's not what God says. And the eyes of the Lord, of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. And it's our tongues that, that he believe he's speaking about there. God wants us to have, wants us to live our lives like he's right there all the time. Verse number four, a wholesome tongue or a healthy in the Lord tongue is a tree of life. Man, it builds, it encourages, it helps. A wholesome tongue does not beat people down, does not depress people, does not complain all the time about their life. No, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness or distortion, perverseness in the Bible means twisting something that it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't represent what it's supposed to. Perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. It's a break in the spirit. When you, when you have a tongue that has speaks bad things, not cuss words. I hope none of us are cussing still. I mean, we, we, we got enough people in here, but we ought to be past that. Especially everybody that's in our church membership. But, our mouths can break people down and tear them down. 
Now remember, I'm preaching to me. And, and, and I, I'm, not, I, I'm not talking about anything with anybody in this place. I, I, I treat you all great. It's the, my loved ones that I fall apart with sometimes. I spend so much time with them. I, that's, I guess that's it. I, I don't know why it would have to be like that. But, and I've had some times with, with different people in these rooms and this room and stuff like that. But, but listen, man, I don't want that. I want, I want what we preached on Thursday night. I want, I want to be courteous. And I want to be pitiful. And, and, and I, want, I, want to, I want to help folks. And the only way I can reason I think God had me preach this message is to follow up from Thursday night. That our mouths are what's going to do it. And we can say we're mature. And, you know, I was talking to someone not long ago that their heart was all messed up. And, uh, and, and, and it... There's really no way to say it without giving it away, so I'm not going to say it. But, you know, but their actions made it like they were just walking with God completely here. Like, woo! But everybody they were having speech with, they were breaking their pastor and other people down in our church. And I said, stop acting at our church when you have a mouth problem. And they denied it. And, and But that's perverseness. They twisted everything. And it's a breach in their spirit. It's a break in their spirit. It's a breach. It, it, it breaks into their spirit and it changes everything. Perverseness of the tongue will, will breach your spirit. The tongue is a world of iniquity, the Bible says. A, a, uh, 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 it set it on the, set it the fire on world, or the, the world on fire, the tongue did. Every evil occurrence on the face of this earth, anything that's ever happened evil on the face of the earth, whether it be uh, anything Hitler did or Stalin, Stalin or people murderers, every little thing started with one little thing, and it started with this mouth, the tongue. It perverseness in it is wrong. And so I want to grow in the Lord. And, and I said this about Paul this morning that man, he wanted to impart some spiritual gift to them, and he was going to grow with them. And that's what I've done here. I've, I've grown in the Lord with you, and we all grow together, and God gives me something, I give it to you, but I'm telling you, this mouth of ours is very, very important that we get it right. Yeah. It's very important that we don't go home and show them somebody else, because it will wreck their life, because mama is not what she is at the church house, or daddy is not what he is at the house, church house. He's perverse with his tongue. He distorts the truth. And he doesn't, and he has a problem with it. And the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Kid, eyes of our kids are everywhere. And, and so I just want you to, to understand that. A wise man speaks the right, but a breach in the spirit breaks our character. A foolish a fool despises his father's instruction. Now, you, you young boys, you young girls, won't you listen to this now? Very important that you listen to me. The Bible is correct. And, and everybody in here, our father's instruction, uh, uh, a fool despises our father's instruction. When you get corrected and get instruction, young people, listen to me. It is wonderful. So I don't feel like it's wonderful. No, no, it's, it's God's plan to have your parents correct you and for you to say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, and it won't happen again. But a fool does this. Yeah, yeah, mom, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. That's a fool. And, and the fool will run out of time. It despises his father's instruction. He's telling me again. She's telling me again. But 
correction is a good thing because if we just say, yes, sir, you, you know, you're right. And then God's in it. We got corrected. Now, listen, there isn't a child on the face of this earth that doesn't need correction. Why, Brother Burton? Sin. It's sin. It doesn't make you messed up. I'm constantly correcting him and her, and I try correcting her <laughs> and her. But I have, we have three different kids who at different times, they take it good sometimes, and sometimes they don't take it good. But a fool despiseth his father's instruction. But look what it says. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. The word regard means to take heed, to listen to it. Reproof is being corrected, told where you're wrong. And prudent means to be wise or sensible, to understand it. A fool despises his father instruction and gets hard. <sighs> Man. But, but listen, it's one of the greatest tools God ever gave us. Was he corrects us? And, and listen to me. I, I'm just telling you, I, 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 I want to guard my life with the utmost if I can because I have nobody in the face of this earth telling me what to do. Not one person. I have a pastor, really. I got one, but he's not telling me nothing. I don't have a, I don't work for anybody, uh, you know, and it's a dangerous place to be, but I want to hear his instruction, and when I read this, I want to say, man, I, I could have had a soft answer. I can't start using my tongue to do, say the right stuff. I understand God's watching everything, and I want to have a wholesome tongue, but I don't want to be a fool and despise my father's instruction. I thank God. That at this point in my life, I do not feel that way about God's instruction. Now, young people, listen to me. You can say you don't either, but when pastor says we ought to be singing or straighten up or stop doing this or stop doing that or, or watch out for this and watch out for this and, and you don't take it right, you're despising God, my instruction and God's instruction because all I'm trying to do is help you. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. There's a lot of wealth and riches is treasure, but it's also strength. It was a word there for that. In, in the house of the righteous, people that want to live right for the Lord, people that want to live right for the Lord, that are saved and living right for the Lord, there is much treasure. There's strength in your home. There's strength in my physical home. There's strength in my, my body. There's strength in my kids. They're, they're offspring of me. And, and God wants that. In the house of, house of the righteous, there's much treasure. But look at it. But in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. He said, I wonder why that guy is always in trouble. But it's the revenues of the wicked. The gain, what they get. That's what wicked people get. They get trouble. Wicked just means that they, they're, they're not morally right. And, and morally, people know what morality is. We're, we're living in a, a life where, you, it, it just, and I've been talking about it already, it, it's now wrong to sing, baby, it's cold outside. But it's not wrong to, 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 to take a, pair of tweezers or big pair of scissors and cut a baby out of someone's stomach. I mean, where do we live at? What is going on with that? But they're wicked. And that's their excuse. And that's why we need to look at them and say, that's the way wicked people act. God says it, that there'd be trouble in their house. I can't understand why they would do that. Well, they're lost, they're wicked, and we're righteous. Made righteous by God. And he says, in our house, there'll be much treasure, strength, not bucks, necessarily. In the house of the righteous, there, there's a lot of treasure. And that's, that's through honesty. 
That's through making the right decisions. That's through honoring the Lord, honoring our parents, honoring our, our, our church, honoring our pastor. And I'm not saying bowing down to me. I'm talking about just, just doing what God wants us to do. But the wicked, they have crime and evil. Now, folks, listen to me. You got family and you got friends, man. That's where they live. And that's what's going on with them. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Here we are back to the lips again. We're not going to get anywhere tonight with this passage, but that's okay. You're exactly where we want to get. Yeah. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. Knowledge, not just, you know, big smart words where we, they seem like they're so smart and they know everything. No, they just, the lips of the wise, I mean, they, they just, they have the right things to say to people because they know what God wants them to say. I, I hate it for her, for that little lady. But I'm glad she's in here for as long as we're in here. And that's what God would have. But I used to have times I'm like, well, you know what? But I tell them on the street all the time, I don't care how you come, just come. You can sleep in the back and just come. Just get in here and come. We want you to hear the word of God. And that's where God is because God loves her and wants her and wants to do something with her. And, and that's where we are. We, we, we want what God wants, right? And, and so as I read this, I'm just giving you my devotion. That's all we're really doing. Just, just thinking about what God told me in my devotion. But the heart of the foolish doth not so, or doeth not so. Now it doesn't say anything about the lips there. It says the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish, the inside of who they really are, their total being, doeth it not so. When our hearts are foolish, silly, stupid, when we don't have anything good going in there, building it, when we're not trying to let God control it, we don't say anything right. And I, have, I am one of the most cynical, sarcastic people you will meet. But I'm a lot less than I was 10 years ago. I know that. Because when I can spot it, and I realize, man, you're... You're not even right, Burton. You're just making fun of people. And it, as a, when I'm a fool, it's fun to make fun of people. It's just cool to make fun of everybody else. But that's not the Lord's heart. Fools disperse knowledge, but, but God says, the heart of the wise, the, the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The mind, the will of a foolish man, they, that's not even in their heart. They're not even thinking right. They don't even have it right. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. You know, many people, you know, want to give to God, and, and, uh, but, but if your heart's not right, if you're, if it's an abomination, abominable is a very, very grievous word in our Bible. There's many things d disgusting. Uh, 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 the, the word uh, ab abhorrence or abhorring, hating. God hates it, abhors it. But it was ab abhorrence in the in the where I was looking at today. Hey. I don't want to have a wicked, unmoral mind. Just because I'm saved doesn't mean I'm going to think right. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta live, live in the spirit. I gotta walk in the spirit. I've gotta let God direct my steps. And so the only way to do First Peter chapter number three, verse number eight, is to control our mouth. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright. Is his delight. When's the last time 
And I hope today, I hope all of us today, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but was my prayer a delight to the Lord? It's like, man, that's good. I'm so glad he's praying to me. I, I, I'm a terrible uh, public prayer. I just don't sound like those old men of God do, and I wonder how I could do that, but it just it's not me, Lord. I, I mean, I pray the same stuff, and I'm boring, I guess, or whatever, but it is my heart when I'm praying up here. I am I'm really trying to talk to the Lord. Early on in the ministry when we first started the church, I don't know who I was talking to. I was so nervous. I just prayed and they tried to sound, say something good in front of everybody. And, but man, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be like that. I want my prayer of the upright to be his delight. Burton is praying. He said, well, you know, if I was up there, I'd be praying too. But I'm down here. And, man, you better, you better make sure every chance you got to talk to the Lord, every chance we give you in here, you will stand before him one day. And he will say, most of the time in my house, you didn't talk to me anyway, if that's who you are. you got to pray on purpose. The prayer of the upright is his delight. And I don't want to be the sacrifice of the wicked, being an abomination to the Lord. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. <laughs> I'm going to stop there, but I want to tell you this. Come here, Dale. Dale is righteousness. It, this, is, this is God being, uh, this is what God wants me to be, and Dale is it. Start walking that way. And I'm just going to follow him. I said, man, you look stupid following him all the time. I mean, it's not cool to follow him all the time. Well, it's, it's what I want. I want to follow him wherever he goes. Just go anywhere. No, but don't go outside. Uh, I, I want to follow him. And God says, man, we ought to follow after righteousness. And, and some people might say, man, he just, that, that's just silly. He always does that. That's his, I mean, you know, he, does, he probably has no fun. No, I'm going to have a lot of fun falling after righteousness. Yeah. And, and, and God wants us to, but, but fools don't do that. Thank you, Dale. Fools don't do that. They don't, they don't follow after righteousness. The, the, the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but... But the upright, they follow after righteousness. And, and I want to I make sure, man, Lord, follow means I got to do something. I cannot just sit. I got to go after it. I've got to look for it. I've got to want it. I've got to figure out where it's at. Uh, you know, and, and, and I, don't, I'm not, I hope I'm not confusing you on that. I've got to get in the book. I've got to let God speak to my heart. And I got to say, man, I want that. I want, I, I, a soft answer turneth away wrath. I want that. I don't want my prayers to be an abomination to God. I don't want to live a wicked life. And I'm telling you, I'm ashamed of who I am often yeah. when I've got a breach in the spirit because I let something breach it. And it's nobody else's fault but mine because my actions should not be determined by how anybody else treats me. I am to be a Christian and walk after God no matter what happens. And it's not the easiest thing to do, but I want to do it. Let's do one more. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Just another one. Well, it sounds like he's repeating himself. He's not. Correction is grievous unto them that forsaketh the way. <laughs> Well, I can tell you right now, they're, they, they, they say what they want to say, but they're, 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 they're for, they forsook the way. I've, 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 uh, I've, been on, I've talked to many people, you know, that when I try to help them and give them correction for their life because they ask for it. I don't go to anybody and say, I, I will to all of you because you're in this thing and I will come say, hey, listen, you know. But if you say, no, I don't want your help, then I say, okay, that's fine. But correction is grievous to them that forsake the way. You know, it, it wasn't his fault. It was my fault because I forsook the way. I'm not following the way anymore. And so when I get correction, I'm, I, it's pride. Pride go before destruction. Pride without, by, only by pride cometh contention. And, and so it's, correction is grievous to somebody that's not walking with God. 
We got to teach our kids to walk with God. How do you do that, Brother Burton? I, I don't have all those answers. All I know is the, to have them get up and read their Bible in the morning. Let's sit around a table and let's have a devotion that sometimes I just make up characters and, and try to give a life's lesson and give a verse with it. Sometimes we just discuss a verse and we pray and I say, guys, be leaders. Don't let anybody affect you. Walk with God. Don't be, try to be like the cool kids. It isn't worth it. Just stand strong. That's all I know to do. But, I, but, but everything we just learned here tonight is really how I train my kids. I better talk right around them. I better stop being, uh, you know, Dale sometimes they blow up on those girls. And I wonder, why is he doing that? Uh, he got a good leader, got a good teacher, a daddy that blows up sometimes in his home. And I don't want that. And I'm hoping it's not too late for him to forget that. Yeah. They are what little us's. We can say whatever we want. I mean, I don't want to lose my kids. If I do, I, you know, and it's not always the parents' fault and, and all that. I'm not saying that. But we put them around the right people. We call sin what it is. We tell them those kids are not right for your relationship. I don't care. Listen to me. In our church, if we have problematic people in our church and kids we don't want our kids to be around, that's our right to do. We don't have to explain that or to anybody. That is our personal right. We ought to try to, to reconcile relationships and get things right and help one another. But, but listen to me, I've got to live the right life in front of him and direct him the right way, her and her. And the, the, the girls aren't perfect. They just get sometimes get a little freer passes than he does. And that ain't completely right. But he is going to be a man. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're not raising sissies. Yeah. And, and so, you know, God wants us to live a life that would be about this book. Correction is grievous unto them that forsake the way, and he hateth reproof, and he that hateth reproof shall die. He that hates being corrected, they're going to die spiritually. And, and really, the Bible says the first, one of the first promises in the Bible is obey them, uh, uh, honor thy mother and thy father, and it says right after that that, you're, that you have a long life. And so, whether if you don't honor your mom and your dad and, and, and all that, you're in trouble. These bus kids, they're to be honoring their parents. And they're to be, to be taught that here, even if their parents aren't right. And so just, just something, devotion, and, and maybe God helped us a little bit. Somebody in here got something. Uh, no, it, it, it just, just one of them times where God says, take that Bible in there and stand up. And, and I, I'd like to look at some more of that. Uh, at a later time, there's a lot in there. I stored all the places about the mouth, and I meant to look at all those with you tonight, but I didn't want to miss any of those verses. So let's pray, and let's get ready to go to the house. Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for the word of God tonight. Help us, Lord, with our mouths.